grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. Our text this evening is the Old Testament lesson uh, for Thanksgiving, in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 8, verses 1 through 10. And we look, under the, we look at it under the theme, Praise the Lord your God. <clears throat> there was a young man named John, and somebody gave him a parrot. And this parrot had a terrible language. Vocabulary was just awful. And his attitude was bad. And so John tried to get this parrot to change. So he spoke kind words to him and everything and played soft music for him and everything, but nothing helped. This parrot was outrageous with his language and the way he treated John and so forth. So John really got upset one day and he took the parrot and he opened the freezer door and put him in. Well, this parrot, as he listens, he's making all kinds of noise inside the freezer there and so forth. And all of a sudden, he's very silent. Nothing's coming out of that freezer. And so he wonders, I wonder if the parrot's okay or not. So he opens the door, holds out his arm, and the parrot comes and sits on his arm. And the parrot says to him, I believe I have, may have offended you with my rude language and actions. I'm sincerely remorseful for my transgressions, and I fully intend to do everything I can to correct my rude and unforgivable behavior. John was stunned. Didn't know what to say. Then the parrot says to him, he says, may I ask you what that turkey did that is frozen in that freezer? <laughs> you get people's attention some way or another, see? <laughs> well, the Lord speaks to us in, in our text this e evening, and he speaks to us about being thankful. Because of our sinfulness, we are tempted many times to be unthankful. Because so often, we complain about many things. The top thing we complain about, by the way, is weather, I believe. It's the weather, it's the government, it's uh, our work, our family, our society, our health. We've got all kinds of things that we complain about. And we all do that. It's one way or another. Some of us may complain a little more than others, but we have that problem. The other thing we do is we take things for granted in life. We, like our health. If we're feeling well, we just take it for granted. We don't think about it, do we? So we take that for granted. We may take our spouse for granted. He or she has always been there with me and seen me through all kinds of things, so we just take them for granted. Or we take our freedoms for granted that we enjoy here in America. We take God's love for granted. The Bible says God loves you, doesn't he? And so we take that for granted in our lives. Forgiveness we take for granted from God. Our salvation we can also take for granted. These kinds of things. So we complain about things and then we take a lot of things for granted in our life. And that's what, what we human beings are like. And we don't appreciate everything always. We don't appreciate what has happened in the past either. Uh, and that. In, in the comic strip, High and Lewis, the son asks, why do we always have turkey on Thanksgiving? And Lewis says, well, because it's a tradition. And the other son says, he asks, well, the son asks, what is a tradition? His brother answers, something we've been doing so long we can't remember why. And that can happen to us, can't it? We, a tradition just comes, we don't know where to start from and so forth, and, and so it doesn't have much meaning to us. Someone has said this, a country that forgets its history doesn't deserve a future. And as we gather together for another Thanksgiving, I think that's very true. We need to always remember. We, remember. we need to remember the history of our country. We need to remember what it cost in our, in our country. It costs many people the freedoms and the, and the joy that we have today because of what's gone on in the past. The years of 2011 to 2015, we were celebrating the 150th anniversary of the Civil War. The Civil War was fought from 1861 to 1865. And my wife and I have taken an interest in this, and we've traveled uh, to Virginia and the Carolinas and Georgia and Kentucky, Tennessee and Mississippi and those areas and visited many battlefields of the Civil War. That war, many people gave their lives. The statistic is that 620,000 
soldiers were killed. 50,000 civilians were killed. That 8% of men, 13 to 43, died in that war. So many gave their lives there in that war and other wars that had been fought. The other big war where many lost their lives was the Second World War in our history. We need to be thankful and we need to appreciate that what men and women have given in order that you and I have the nation that we have today. We need to be thankful for that. We also need to be thankful for something that, the, that Moses speaks in our text. And it's kind of interesting that you would speak, that to be thankful for hardships. But listen to what Moses says. I mean, they've been, they've been wandering around there in the desert of Sinai for 40 years. And Moses says this in our text. He, speaking of God, he humbled you, causing you to hunger, and then feeding you with manna, which neither you nor your fathers had known, to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. He's saying, you, were, you needed the Lord, you were in want, and that was good for you. You need to be thankful for that, he's telling them. We would say, be thankful for something that's difficult for us, that we don't like. Well, sometimes we, people need, we need to be thankful even in hardships. Thanksgiving Day, we, in America here, we usually date back to the pilgrims. In other words, in 1620, when they came over on the Mayflower and landed on Plymouth uh, there. And they gave thanks that next fall. They, did they give thanks because of bounty? because they had been richly, so richly blessed. Over half of them had died during that terrible and horrible winter that they went through. And they had very little food. But do you know what one thing that kept them alive? And it was, it was, the, it was the pumpkin. They had a little song that went like this. We have pumpkin in, at morning and pumpkin at noon. If it were not for pumpkin, pumpkin we would be undone. Now just think of that that you're thankful for pumpkins to end that in our lives. We have so much richly blessed than that to be thankful for this evening, yes. And we need to be thankful then for bounty. And that's what Moses does also. As he goes on in our text, he says to the children of Israel, he says, you've had this as you've wandered through the desert. He says, now look ahead. And then, what do they have to look ahead to? He says this, for the Lord your God is bringing you into a good land a land with streams and pools of water, with springs flowing in the valleys and hills, a land with wheat and barley, vines and fig trees, pomegranates, olive oil and honey, a land where bread will not be scarce and you will lack nothing, a land where the rocks are iron and you can dig copper out of the hills. When you have eaten and are satisfied, praise the Lord your God for the good land he has given you. And we had to say that today, wouldn't we? Praise the Lord God for the good land he's given us. We need to look around us and see the good land the Lord has given us. And we need to be appreciative of that. We need to thank him for the beauty that we have here in Minnesota and in America. And around this world, we can see many beautiful things that the Lord has, has placed here for us. He's also given us a responsibility. As we are thankful for all those things, we have a responsibility for the generations coming after us. And that means that we take care of what the Lord has given us. And we take care of it well. That we are good stewards of what he given us. The Amish has this saying. We didn't inherit the land from our fathers. We are borrowing it from our children. I think it's kind of a neat saying they got. We're borrowing it from our children. Because we need to think about our children and children's children as we live our life here too. That we're leaving them the blessings just as we've been blessed with in our lives also. That means taking care of what the Lord uh, gives us in our life. Because life is precious. Carl Sagan, a, a scientist, talked about Voyager 1 and 2 spacecrafts flying through space, and I understand they're still flying through space. He said this, We have not found even a trace of life. Voyager reminds us of the rarity and preciousness of life on Earth and our, re our responsibility to preserve it. Yes, our responsibility to preserve it. We haven't got another place to go to live. And we need, to, we need to understand that in our lives. And so, yes, we are to be caretakers. We are to be caretakers of, of what God gives to you and me. We are to be good stewards of, of the land, good stewards of everything that we have in our lives. 
<coughs> people haven't always been good stewards. Solomon, King Solomon built the temple in his palace with the cedars of Lebanon. They would go, went, brought those big cedars down from Lebanon and he built these magnificent buildings. Today, there's only about a half a dozen of those cedars left. They got a steel fence around them because they haven't planted more. And so that, or we have Plato, hundreds of years before Christ, he talked to the Greeks to quit cutting the trees down, to build ships and for commerce and all that. And today in that area that he talked about is a land that's barren. So yes, it's important that we take care of what God has given us to pass on to the next generation that we are good stewards of it at all times. And the one thing that we need to be really good stewards of is the gospel is the word of God, that we keep that, that we hold on to God's word, that we pass it on to the next generation and that generation on to the next generation. Those are truly important for us to be doing, just as God speaks in his word over and over again of passing on to the next generation at all times. So yes, this evening we stand in wonder of God's creation. And it's time for you and me to give thanks for that and all the spiritual blessings and everything else that he gives us. And that we give thanks to that Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That we give thanks to that one who came down to this earth to be our Savior. That we give thanks that that Lord walked among us. That the Lord ministered to us. That he fed the hungry, that he healed the sick. That the Lord finally went to a cross. And he suffered and died on that cross. For you and for me and for all the world and atone for our sins, so that in him we have forgiveness, in him we have eternal salvation. That's something to truly praise the Lord for and give thanks for. And that Lord speaks to you and me that not only that, but he rose again from the dead and he says, because I live, you will live also. He's promising to you and me eternal life. There's nothing more that we can give thanks for than for eternal life itself. The most glorious thing that the Lord gives to you and me that we don't earn at all. And so, yes, it's an evening to truly give thanks to the Lord and stand in wonder of the new life that the Lord gives to you and me every day of our lives. And when you think you don't have anything to be thankful for, just think about the love of the Lord. Think of what he's done for you and what he's done for all human beings. Think of where he's put you. Think of those people around you that he's placed you with. And then you can truly give thanks unto him, not just today, not just tomorrow, but we can give thanks to him every day of our lives. Amen. May the peace of God which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen.